homes may no longer be for homeowners. So I've been somewhat obsessed with what I think is the most consequential trend in residential real estate, the evolution of the single family home into a measurable, tradable, and increasingly liquid asset. It is beginning to look, feel, and act much like a commodity, and that could have pretty dramatic consequences for what the US housing market looks like. The latest startup to ride this wave is Roofstock. It just raised $240 million at a $1.9 billion valuation. And Roofstock is a marketplace for single family homes. It basically helps investors identify, trade, and manage homes on its platform in exchange for a piece of the action. Founded by Starwood Mafia alum Gary Beasley, Roofstock wants to place itself at the center of what it describes as a $4 trillion asset class. And it's doing this in several interesting ways. So let's break it down. Number one, it's investing in iBuying. To ensure that its marketplace has a robust supply of homes, Roofstock engages in algorithmically driven instant home buying. But unlike other players in the space, let's say OfferPad and Opendoor, Roofstock has a preference for homes with tenants already in them to ensure existing cash flow. Number two, it's fractionalizing homes. A new product called Roofstock One allows investors to buy stakes in single family rentals rather than outright properties. Rather than buy, let's say, two homes in Kansas, you could buy 20 stakes in homes across Across several markets, thereby spreading your risk. And number three, it's also looking to tokenize ownership on the blockchain. The digital ledger theoretically could hold detailed information about homes, maintenance, upgrades, and all of that. Now, all these initiatives are designed to make it easier for investors to trade single family rentals, but it might be the institutional investors, the ones with huge piles of money, who stand to benefit most. Roofstock makes it easier to deploy large chunks of capital in search of single family homes. We've previously talked a ton about how Wall Street is obsessed with this sector. And that capital, in many cases, is competing directly with mom and pop Americans looking to buy a home. When I asked Roofstock CEO Gary Beasley about this, he insisted that making a marketplace more liquid was good for all investors, not just the big ones. Institutional investors bid up stocks, right? Are they crowding out the mom and pop investor just because they're buying equities? Maybe, maybe not, he said. There is probably regulation on the horizon, though. In a September memo, the White House directly addressed concerns about growing institutional ownership and talked about ways to restrict institutional access to homes. In Atlanta, the problem is really pronounced. A third of homes in the fourth quarter sold directly to investors, according to Redfin data, with Jacksonville, Charlotte, and Las Vegas not far behind. Roofstock is quite aware of how regulation might impact its business going forward, and it's starting to get into the influence game. There are a lot of policymakers who will listen to all sorts of arguments, even though they might not talk publicly about things, Gary Beasley told me, but they will listen. So what do you think about this trend about the institutionalization of single family homes? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to follow The Real Deal on YouTube and Instagram for more pay dirt breakdowns.